Hi, everybody. It's Rob McClure with Slow Coach, and I am absolutely delighted to be doing this feedback session for one of my favorite musical theater performances of all time. Judy Dench singing Send in the Clowns from a Little Night Music. Now, first of all, Judy Dench does not need my feedback on anything. Lord knows I will not be teaching Judy Dench diddly squat in this video. However, it gives us an opportunity to nerd out about one of my favorite performances of all time. And two, it gives me an opportunity to show you how the Slow Coach teaching platform works. It's an extraordinary tool and I've been having a blast on it. And I would go through this exact same process with videos of you that you upload for me to give similar critiques. Um, and uh, I've been having a blast doing all of these amazing responses for amazing students. And uh, let me show you what I mean. So uh, let's dive in together. Here's the clip. Um, this is from a concert. Uh, it was actually called Hey Mr. Producer, and it was a salute to Cameron McIntosh at the Royal Albert Hall. And uh, it's an amazing concert from beginning to end, but this performance particularly stands out. I know we just started, but I have to jump in already. Um, a couple of things. First of all, can we talk about first uh, the clarinet that starts that song is so unbelievably gorgeous. But can we talk about the fact that Judy Dench uh, wanted a scene partner for this song? Send in the Clowns is traditionally done as a solo uh, when it's done out of show context. However, Judy Dench, being the actress she is, realizes that this song is a scene, as all songs are in musical theater. Uh, and she wants her scene partner. She wants her scene partner there with her to sing too, because if acting is reacting, you want that other human being, you want the eyes and ears receiving your song to be there. And uh, and she had that actor stand there. You'll see in a moment, he sort of cheats his way looking upstage as not to draw focus from her singing, uh, but he's very present for her. Um, also, let's just talk about how difficult this song is. I know a lot of people who have sung Send in the Clowns, um, but very few who have understood it as well as Judy Dench clearly does. Um, it's got a lot of metaphor. It's got a lot of irony. It's got a lot of sarcasm. The lyric can be a little hard to untangle, and um, and the song's not easy to sing either, um, because A, it's Stephen Sondheim, and if Stephen Sondheim is writing a song for a complicated character in a complicated situation, it's going to be a complicated song. Let's take a peek. Uh, I brought the score here so we can look together. First things first, let's talk about this score. Send in the Clowns itself is not in traditional 4-4 time. Take a look right here. It starts in 12-8. Right away, we are not in an easy-to-sing time signature. Then, look right away on the fourth bar of this top system. Look, we go to a 9-8 bar. So we go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 2, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 1, 2, 3, 4. We're already... Very, very complex because Stephen Sondheim will not write a simple song for a complicated situation. He's too smart and brilliant a composer to do so. So let's jump back to uh, to the dame, shall we? Being amazing as she always is. Yeah. So as I said, take a look at this scene partner. She's already responsive. This isn't about her making some grand entrance. It's a character entering a scene. They clearly establish a relationship right away. It's, it's pretty astonishing work. Do we all hear that? Ready? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Are we up here? Me here at last on the ground. You will be there. Send 
Okay. Let's stop there. What the heck does that mean? Isn't it rich? Are we a pair? Me here at last on the ground, you in midair, send in the clowns. Man, do you need a great actress to be able to make sense of that stuff, and she, she so clearly does. If you know a little night music, what's happening in this moment is it's a woman who has spent her whole life sort of running around. Uh, she's a very dramatic actress uh, and has spent a lot of her life running around on this guy, and uh, all he wanted was for her to commit. Uh, and now she's at the stage in her life where she shows up ready to commit to him, and for the first time, he's not ready to commit to her. Um, and she's left in this moment. So right away, isn't it rich? Is met with such painful sarcasm, right? Um, that lyric, isn't it rich? There's so, that's such a loaded question. Are, are, are we a pair? Look at us. Are we a pair or what? Isn't it rich? Are we a pair? Me here at last on the ground. Me, of all people at last on the ground, and you in midair. Send in the clowns, meaning you have got to be kidding me. I'm on the ground and you're in midair? Send in the clowns. Because this is a three-ring ring circus. This is not real life. This is a joke. This is a prank, right? I'm the grounded one and you're the one running around? This can't be real. Send in the clowns, right? Such amazing lyrics. And such an incredible score. Stephen Sondheim's a genius. I could do this all day. Isn't it bliss? Don't you approve? A one who keeps tearing around. One who can't move. Where are the clowns? Send in the clowns. Amazing. Let's take a look at those lyrics, shall we? Let's jump back over here because there's some really interesting stuff going on in the score. Um, there's a lot of tenudos, uh, tenudos in this score, meaning a lot of holds or waits or pauses. So um, let's go to this second verse. Uh, right here, it looks on bar eight. So we're back in that 12 8 time. Isn't it bliss? Don't you approve? One who keeps now right on tearing around. Um, we go to that crazy 9 8 bar. One who keeps tearing around. One who can't move. Um, and notice that tenuto, T E N period, right there at the end of that bar. That basically means that we're going to have a hold there. So look at what Sondheim is giving the actress there. He's got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. The thing about twelve eight is that it almost feels like three four. It almost feels like a waltz, which in a romantic song between two longtime lovers feels appropriate, right? This waltz that we get lulled in. Bum, 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 bum. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Isn't it bliss? Waltz, waltz, don't you approve? Waltz, waltz, one who keeps one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Tenuto. And one, two, three, four. It's interruptions in the waltz for the reality check. We're never going to get swept up in this waltz, right? We're not dancing anymore. We're not dance partners. We're not waltzing together. That's why he builds in these beautiful, one who keeps tearing around, one who makes the whole orchestra can't move. And right on the lyric, can't move, we go into the next downbeat of that 12-8. One, two, three, four, five. It's a beautiful composition, flawlessly executed um, by both Judy Dench and the orchestra. It's really just profoundly powerful stuff. She's a superhero. Good grief. I can click that little disc right there and it'll bring me right back to where I was. Just when I stopped These lyrics. Doors, Just when I stopped opening doors. Finally Fine. knowing the one that I wanted was yours. Ugh. Making my entrance again with 
was my usual flag. Sure of my lines. No one is there. Come on, can we talk about these lyrics? Can we talk about these lyrics? Just when I stopped opening doors. So meaning just when she's at the stage of her life where she doesn't want to be opening new doors anymore. She wants to pick a room, pick a room, pick a door, no more new doors, right? Which is such a great, Sondheim likes to write a lot about doors, which I love. Um, but uh, just when I stopped opening doors, finally knowing the one that I wanted was yours. Often I don't think people quite connect that phrase. What she's saying is just when I stopped opening doors, finally knowing the one that I wanted, the door that I wanted was yours, your door. Just when I stopped opening doors, finally knowing the door that I wanted was yours. Making my entrance again through that door with my usual flair, sure of my lines, and no one is there. Gosh, Stephen Sondheim, it's powerful stuff. And um, you will not get better execution or activation of those lyrics than, uh, than Judy Dench. Let's go back and just listen to her execute that lyric again. Was yours. Wait, let's go further back. Opening just when I stop. Haha, <laughs> first of all, notice that Judy Dench never does disservice to Sondheim's consonants. She doesn't say, just when I stopped, you'll hear the D on I'd, just when I'd stopped, just when I'd stopped. Just when I'd stopped. Just, just when I'd stopped opening, opening doors. doors. Consonants. Finally knowing the one that I wanted was yours. Another 9-8 bar. Just one, uh, knowing the one that I want. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And one, two, three, four. God, gorgeous stuff. Making my entrance again was my usual plan. Sure of Look at that scene, life. partner. Just giving her the person she needs to sing to. No one is there. Unbelievable. And also, notice what she's doing. Um, a lot of times when people sing this song, it feels past tense. It feels like she's describing pain she's already been through. Or this, just when I'd stopped opening doors, finally knowing the one that I wanted was yours, making my entrance again with my usual flair, sure of my lines, no one is there. Like she's talking about a traumatic event that's already happened. If you watch what Judy Dench is doing, on this line, no one is there. That is present tense realization. This is not regaling us with something that happened off stage. This is what's happening to her right now. She's realizing no one is there as she sings no one is there. Watch. No one is there. That's not telling a story. That's realizing, realization, which is realization. So often in performance of musical theater, it's about what's happening to you while you're telling the story of your song. The story of your song is present tense. It can't feel like you're singing about feelings that you've already decided you have. It has to be you struggling to choose the words about what's happening to you in the present tense. And man, there is no greater teacher than that than Judy Dench. Don't you love fast? Hmm. Irony, don't you love fast? My fault, I fear. My fault, I fear. I thought that you'd want what I want. Sorry, my dear. Ugh, talk about it happening to you while you're singing it. Uh, here's an actress saying, don't you love farce? Obviously, you know what a farce is, right? A crazy, unlikely, outlandish comedy. Don't you love farce? It's my fault, I fear. I'm sorry uh, that this has become a farce. I thought you'd want what I want. Sorry, my dear. Oof. Rough. But where are the clowns? But where are the clowns? If this is a farce, where are the clowns? Quick, send in the 
clouds. Don't bother. We are the clowns. We are the fools. Desiree, I should never have come. I'm sorry. To flirt with rescue when one has no intention of being saved. Please try to forgive me. I don't know how anyone attempts to do the entirety of this song without that line. And anytime somebody does this song as a solo, you're not being given the reason to sing this last verse, which is that he leaves. That very moment when he leaves and her hand is left hanging there. It is the inciting incident that causes the next verse. So often we, um, we feel like we're singing a song uh, or actually, we feel like the song is singing us, that we are somehow a vessel of the song as opposed to the song is happening. We are causing the song. This music, that clarinet, that, that time signature, those tenudos are being caused by what is happening to the character. She is making that clarinet play as opposed to obeying the clarinet. The clarinet is her. It's what's happening to her. Um, so someone like this who treats the song like their internal engine will serve that song properly. And this final, this last year that our car enters into is fueled by that guy's line and that guy's exit, which causes us to go on. And then Judy Dench has the courage to start it with her back to us. Isn't it rich? Isn't it queer? Losing my time in this place. In my career. Come on. But where are the clouds? There ought to be clouds. This would, this would be less depressing. <laughs> Maybe next year. I mean, I mean, first of all, let's go back just a second. Um, Let's talk about that last line. There ought to be clowns. Well, maybe next year. So that little that little seed for such a for a song that feels so depressing, just the, the slightest inkling of hope for her. Maybe next year. Maybe next year this won't this won't be such a tragedy. There'll be something funny about this. Um, but also look at her her serv service of these lyrics, ready? Losing my time. Also, that 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 line for an for a character who's a, a, a an older actress, um, isn't it rich? Isn't it queer? Losing my timing this late in my career, everything's a metaphor for her career. You know, sounds like showbiz talk, but it's clearly about her personal life. In my Present tense discovery. But where are the clouds? Watch this diction, ready? There ought to be clowns. Notice there were two T's there. There ought to be clowns, not the lazy thing, which almost every singer I know would go. There ought to be clowns. They would make the T that ends ought and the T that begins to the same T. There ought to be clowns, not Judy Dench, not when she's serving Stephen Sondheim. Ready? Two T's. Because Sondheim wrote two T's. Well, Big old fermata. Maybe. Not this year. Next year. Next had such an underline, right?
And then she doesn't stand there and bask in her wallowing. She leaves. Amazing choices. And Bernadette Peters is left on a stool to say, you're amazing. <laughs> and now she's got a bask in well-deserved applause. Absolutely astonishing artistry. Um, that's the type of stuff I love to do with my students where we get into the lyrics and dissect them in a way that makes you hear them afresh. Um, we, if I were coaching that performance, we would get into every single nitty gritty of those lyrics. We would dissect their, uh, something I call Oprah, their objective place, relationship, activity, and history, fueling that story and those objectives to make it active singing. Because if it's musical theater, theater, if you're singing in musical theater, then it's about the advancement of story. It's about story and character and never just about pretty notes. And some might say Judy Dench is not the most gorgeous singer in, in the world. And I would defy you to not think that that is astonishingly beautiful vocals because it's true. It's true. And, and uh, she's, she's singing her butt off. Um, but so much so that you, she might as well be speaking. It's as impactful as speech because every word is activated. Every syllable, every consonant is on purpose, has a reason and a choice um, and, uh, and clarity, such clarity in that performance. Um, she's never bogged down by the responsibility of making pretty noise. So often, um, people who are really singing their butts off, um, sometimes they'll glaze over because they're thinking about technique of, of the production of pretty sound. Well, if I don't care about what you're saying, you can be singing as pretty as you like. And there are certain people in the, in, on Broadway, you know, the, the Kelly O'Hara's, the Jesse Mueller's, uh, the, uh, Leslie Odom's, the, um, Adrian Warren's people who, despite the fact that they are making extraordinary sound always convince you that they're still talking. In fact, they go from their book scenes into their songs and I forget that they've entered a song because it's such communicative singing, even though what I'm hearing is deeply moving sound. Uh, they never manage to stop communicating. It's about communicative singing. And there is no greater example than what we just saw. Hopefully I can work with you on some communicative singing through Slow Coach where I love to work. See you soon.